chat and we can address it either um, at those question breaks or at the end, as Hannah said. Um, OK. So um, just to kind of start us off, uh, a really useful exercise, I think, is, is if if we as parents sort of try and reflect on what our first experiences of school were like, what memories have you got of being in school for the first time? Um, were they good memories or there some less good memories? Did you have any worries? Were you very excited? Can you remember anything about that time? And also, what are your hopes for your child that is about to start nursery? What would you like for them? Um, if we could just either reflect privately or put them in the chat, I'll just pause for a minute here and give everyone some time um, to think about that. And Hannah, if things pop up in the chat, please do just let me know. I think <clears throat> no one's putting anything in the chat yet, but just thinking of school, I had good memories of school, but I was quite anxious about my child starting school because it's just the letting go and not knowing what he was doing. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's funny how you can hold both of those sort of feelings at the same time, knowing it's a really exciting time, but also being quite worried. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Kat has written, I enjoyed school, but was rather shy. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, you know, it sounds as though there was a positive experience there. Okay, just a few more, a few more seconds um, in case there's any last minute thoughts. OK, we'll move on now. So um, I guess when thinking about transition to nursery school, there are sort of three groups of people um, that have a role to play within that transition. Um, of course, parents, yourselves, the nursery school. Um, and I guess uh, there's got to be quite a lot of collaboration between parents and the nursery school with the child at the centre of that thinking um, so that you're focusing quite a lot on how your child is going to is going to manage um, the transition and and how you can prepare best for that. Um, so we're going to talk about each of these groups, but we're going to start off first with the parents. Um, so um, I think this is a question we've already done some reflecting on, so I might not give I won't give a lot of time to sort of pause and think because I think lots of people have been having um, these conversations already. But um, but I suppose it's important to consider how you as parents feel about your child joining nursery. And, and there's already an, already an indication there of some mixed feelings. Um, these are some common, common feelings that we hear from parents. Um, I'm wondering if these sort of resonate with you, if there's more things that you are feeling, please do feel free to put them in the chat. Um, but of course, it's really common to feel a mix of these things um, and also possibly to experience swinging between quite positive feelings about school and then maybe feeling a little bit worried or anxious as well. Um, and you might have those sort of feelings switching over quite a lot. Um, and that's that's a very, very common experience, I think, for parents and possibly for children as well. Um, they might be really excited about some things, but also quite nervous about other things. Um, and that's really common with any kind of change um, that's sort of on the horizon. Um, and, and as Hannah sort of alluded to already, we've got to let them go. <laughs> It's quite a difficult thing, but but how can we make it easier? And there's a few different things that you can do, but I guess um, the most important thing is is the preparation that goes into it. Um, what you do in the lead up to that transition is is so so key. Um, so think about having routines, getting them into a routine early on. 
um, that your child knows and, that, and, and keeping it consistent as far as possible. Um, so you want to make sure when the day comes, you're on time for the start of the day um, and you're on time to pick up at the end of the day as well. Um, making sure to have a good sort of separation routine. So you're, you're sort of saying goodbye to them. You're, you don't just sort of leave um, without really making sure that they understand that you're going away now, but you will be there later to pick them up. Um, or that someone else that they know will be picking them up, um, as long as they're aware of that. Um, if it is someone different that's coming to pick them up that they maybe have not known for very long, um, make sure that they get to spend some time together before uh, before the, you know before the school term starts. Um, and initially, you might need to stay at nursery a little bit longer. It, it will depend on on how your child adjusts and how the nursery sort of manages them as well. Um, but, but but do just expect that you may need to stay a little bit longer um, than doing a quick drop off, uh, at least the first few times. Um, if you're if you can if you feel like it might be difficult for you to leave your child for the first time, take someone with you um, if that's going to bring you some comfort. Uh, and try and try and sort of make that separation. Um, try and sort of be positive and, and cheerful as you say goodbye. And as Hannah said, it's OK to have a little cry once you've turned the corner, if that's what you need to do. Um, but on the other hand, it's also OK to feel relieved or excited for your child um, and to, to sort of be looking forward to having some time to yourself to do the many things I'm sure you have to do while your child is away. Um, and then that's OK too. I think it's really important to, to, to know that. Um, so just in terms of other things that you can do um, to, to aid with the sort of letting them go, uh, it's really helpful if you can be interested uh, in what their day was like. It kind of shows that you've been holding them in mind, even though you've been away from them. Uh, so when you pick your child up, try and talk to them about what their day was like. What did they learn? What did they eat? Who do they play with? Um, ask them direct questions about their day, but also know that it's OK if they don't want to talk about it. Maybe they don't want to talk about it in that moment. Maybe they'll, they'll want to say something later. That's absolutely fine. Because when they see you at the end of the day, maybe all they want is is to be comforted, knowing that you're there with them again. Um, so don't don't put too much pressure on it if they don't want to talk about their day. Um, also, it's really important that you're keeping up the communication with um, with the teachers or learning support assistants, teaching assistants, anyone that spends time with your child at school. Um, Listen to the advice they have because they've been doing this for such a very long time. They've got lots of experience with managing transitions and I'm sure they've seen almost everything before. Um, so, so hear what they've got to say, take, 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 take their suggestions or advice. Um, but also you've got a space there as well as your child's parent. You know them incredibly well, um, so feel free to to talk about any concerns you've got, make sure you know. Try make make sure you're heard because um, your what you can share about your child's likes, their dislikes, um, the things that might um, you know make them scared or worried, um, things about their needs, uh, particularly if your child maybe speaks a different language at home, they might use different words to communicate things at school. Uh, so maybe share those keywords with your child's teacher um, uh, and, and of course about any changes, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and then finally, when sort of thinking about yourselves as parents, it's it's a really it's a big time in your lives. It's a big time in your child's life. It's really important that you look after yourselves. Um, so try and sort of be reflective think about how you might feel and react before so that you can plan for it a bit better. Uh, if if you've got a network of family, friends, um, other parents that are going through this with you, make sure you're talking to them as well. 
listen to their experiences, share yours. That's a really, really useful way of kind of preparing yourself and not feeling alone through the process. Um, and then finally, plan for the time that your child is at school, because this is time that you, you didn't have previously away from them. Um, if, if you're feeling anxious about it, maybe plan to do something with someone, go out for a coffee with a friend, um, go and see somebody you trust, uh, plan, plan for your time, even if that means doing work or chores or doing something you like. Um, and that will hopefully take your mind off of things and, and sort of make good use of your time before you have to go back and pick them up. Um, OK, so we've got a little pause for questions here. Um, I don't know, Hannah, if there's anything in the chat or if anyone would like to put anything in the chat to discuss right now. I'll just wait a few seconds to see if that happens. Okay, nothing in the chat at the moment. Okay, so maybe we can move on and at the end, if there's any questions, uh, we can take them then. Okay. Okay, um, so now let's think about um, your children and what this is going to be like for them and what, um, what we can do as parents to help them with this journey. Um, so again, as I said before, preparation is really, really key. So we want to be thinking about all of the different things that your child needs to be able to do before they start nursery. And then thinking about what we can do as parents to help them um, to learn those things. So <clears throat> there's a few different things that they need to be able to do. One of the main things and a big change for them will be learning to be more independent. Um, and of course, I mean this at a sort of developmentally appropriate level, um, but we can talk about what that will look like. So one of the big changes for them when they go into nursery is that they're going to have to know how to recognize their own things. So that means knowing which coat is theirs, knowing which water bottle is theirs, knowing which shoes are theirs. Um, and you can help them with this by getting them really familiar with things, um, reminding them, you know, if they wear different coats to school on different days, just reminding them before they go off, oh, you've got the, you know, you've got the purple dinosaur coat today or or something like that. And, and of course, labeling things really clearly with their name. Um, so that if they can't find it, an adult knows what, whose who's coat is whose, basically. Um, and sort of just going along with the clothes and the things. Um, try and make sure that they've got clothes, clothes and shoes that they can take on and put, uh, sorry, take off and put on um, quite easily. So that means if your child can't do shoelaces yet, which they probably can't do a three, um, Something with with Velcro would be really helpful. So if they've got to take their shoes off to, I don't know, go sit on the carpet, they can do that a bit more easily, maybe with some help still, but easier than shoelaces. Um, if they can't do buttons yet, maybe a coat with a zipper, um, maybe trousers that they can pull, pull down quite easily um, would be really helpful. Um, of course, the other thing that's quite big is around toilet training. Uh, and I know that there was a there was a webinar about that earlier this week. Um, but of course, try and make sure that your child knows the routine of the toilet so they know how to sort of flush, wash their hands, um, do those kinds of things by themselves. Um, the other really big thing is around meal times. So if your child is going to be having um, a snack or something at nursery, make sure that they know how to use um, some cutlery if, if, if they need that to eat their food, um, that they are used to maybe sitting um, on the carpet or sitting at a table um, to eat their food. And one of, one of the other things that's really important as well is, is teaching your child how to ask for help if they need it because they're at home with you and, and you and your child know each other so, so well, you probably know that they need help even if they don't say anything. 
but especially when they first start the nursery and the adults around them don't know them as well and your child doesn't know the adults as well um, it might be more difficult for them to get help when they need it so um, teach them maybe a simple phrase to, to ask for help if they need it uh, and of course while you're practicing all of these things at home make sure that you're praising all of their efforts um, and and labeling it quite clearly so you want to say something like, oh, you did a really good job eating um, your pasta with a fork today. That was really good. That was really independent of you or um, that showed me that you're you're a really big girl or something like that. So just make sure that you're praising them. Um, you're explaining what you're praising them for. OK, so one of the other aspects of being ready for nursery is, of course, their, your child's physical and emotional well-being. Um, we, we know that, that this is really important for them to be ready to learn, for them to make the most of their environment when they're in nursery. Um, so there's a few things you can do, uh, making sure that they get enough sleep before they come to nursery. Uh, so having sort of a consistent bedtime routine where they're going to bed um, early enough at night so that they can go, uh, they can wake up um, to go to nursery the next morning if they're going in the morning. Um, but also making sure that they've got they've got a good healthy meal before they go in so that they've got enough energy for their learning and play throughout the day. Um, Try to make sure that they leave in a happy mood. This one can be tricky, um, but maybe if you if you've got a good enough routine in place, um, you you could have some time just you and them before before you have to leave the house. Where um, you can maybe have a little game together or um, have a chat about the exciting things that they're going to be doing at nursery. Um, and then of course to keep themselves healthy and refreshed throughout their day at nursery. Make sure that they're used to drinking lots of water and try and get them used to eating healthy snacks as well because lots of nurseries um, are, 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 you know, of course, as part of their sort of um, healthy eating will be serving healthy snacks. Um, so you want to make sure that your child is used to eating them. OK. Um, other really helpful things or really important things for your child to be able to do before going into nursery where they will be with lots of other children of their age. Um, and this is sort of being part of a group and learning to play together. Um, I know that this has probably been quite difficult for, for, for children, based, you know, given, given the pandemic and sort of reduced opportunities for social contact and meeting other children, knowing how to play in a group. Um, but there's a few things that you can do before um, they go off into nursery. So try and help your child to sort of meet new children and um, get used to playing in sort of games that, that involve taking turns or sharing toys, um, getting them to work on resolving any conflict. So how they can managing how they can manage that sort of needing to share things or, or wait for their turn as well and we'll talk a little bit more about how we can do that in a minute um the other thing of course is also really important along with asking an adult for help is also knowing when to go up to an adult if they've got difficulty with another child um so that that can be resolved for them um one of the ways that you could do this is maybe uh, we will talk about it in a minute, but um, trying to meet with other parents whose children may be going to, to the same nursery as your child so that they get they get used to seeing some of the children before they go into nursery um, and maybe having sort of a play date in the park or at someone's house um, where where you've got a bunch of toys and, and lots of adults there to help um, children learn how to take turns. OK, um, so some of the things that can be helpful to do that. Um, we talked about the routine already, so making sure that there's enough time uh, for them to, to get ready uh, for their day before they leave. 
um, in terms of being part of a group and learning to share, um, doing things together with other children, maybe maybe your child's siblings, maybe um, other children that live nearby, extended family, um, doing things like puzzles together where each person, so you, you have a bunch of puzzle pieces and each child takes a turn to put one down. Um, simple games like passing a ball back and forth, um, building a tower with blocks where each person takes a turn to put a block on, um, reading books together, maybe um, lots of different things that you can do. You also want to help them get used to sitting for, for, for short periods of time and focusing on an adult. Um, so you could do sort of a mini circle time at home, maybe get your uh, other children involved or uh, or you could have um, toys set up. So maybe your child's favorite cuddly toys in a circle with your child. You can do things like sing a hello song, um, maybe read a short story together, have a little snack, sing a song. Um, that's the kind of routine that they will follow in most nurseries. So it would be really helpful to get your child used to doing that. OK, um, other things that are really helpful are, of course, listening to instructions. This is something that they, they will have to do at nursery. Uh, so you can play games to help them do that. Uh, you can sort of role play different scenarios. You might have to be the teacher because your child might not really know what that entails yet. Um, you can play games like Simon Says, where you give really short, simple instructions and it's just about building their skills instead of attending to you, the adult, um, and following um, an instruction. Um, so you also want to give them words for things that they might not really have words for yet. So using words to explain when they're feeling frustrated, um, or when they when they want something. Um, so it, it doesn't have to be a big, long sentence. It could just be a few words that they use to explain um, how they're feeling um, and encouraging them to go to an adult, a familiar adult um, to ask for help or to say when something's bothering them is really helpful. Uh, and then this last one is sort of going to sessions at, at your local children's centre if they're if they're running them over the summer holidays. Um, this could be stay and play sessions or play and learn sessions. You might be able to attend them if you um, ask your ask at your local local children's centre and see if they're running them and if you're eligible to attend. Um, OK, I'll just pause here again because I'm aware that was quite a lot of information that I've just thrown at you. Uh, if anything wasn't wasn't very clear, um, I can go back to it. So if you just put it in the chat now, uh, we can we can revisit topics or uh, if you've got any questions, we can answer them now. We'll just pause for, for maybe a minute, Hannah. Because that was quite a long section. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> Something's going to come up in the chat. I can see someone's typing. So someone has put their contact details. Um, you know what you mentioned about a play date. Uh huh. So to possibly arrange play dates. Ah, is it an offer of a play date? Yeah. Okay, that's really helpful. And I mean, I don't know how we can facilitate that, Hannah. But I'm. I just thought maybe once we stop recording, um, if people want to maybe stay in the chat where that yeah. child is going. That's a good ask, idea. It might yes. be that there's some people in this group whose children are going to the same place. Absolutely. Yeah, um, we can do so that at the end. At the end, yeah, when we stop recording. Anyone have any particular question before we move on? Just give it maybe 10 more seconds.
OK, we'll move on now, but there will be time at the end if there are any more questions. OK. OK, so we've talked about what parents can do. We've talked about what what children need to know before they go into nursery and how we can prepare them for those things. Um, but let's talk now a little bit more about the, the nursery, the setting that your child is going into. Um, and, and how you and the nursery can sort of work together to make that transition um, easier, more successful, um, less, less stressful really for everybody. Um, so some of the things that you can do before your child starts nursery is maybe going to visit if they've got an open evening or um, a, a meet and greet kind of event set up. Um, go, go in, um, take photos if you can of the classroom where they're going to be, maybe the playground. Um, if, if you if you can get consent to do that, that'd be really helpful. Um, you can, um, if possible, also get to know who your child's teacher is or who their kind of key, key adult in the room is going to be. And if, if, if you can, a getting a photo of them, maybe off a website or somewhere is really helpful as well so that you can show them to your child and your child knows um, who to expect and also what to expect in terms of the space when they get to nursery. Um, between sort of that visit and when your school, uh, sorry, when your child first goes to school, uh, if the school is really local to you, which it probably is, um, take your child uh, down the street past the school, point it out to your child, explain to them that they're going to be going to school there um, and talk about the change in a really positive way. Talk about all the exciting things that they're going to do when they go to nursery. Um, if you've got if you've got um, older children who've already been to school, get them involved in that conversation, get them to talk about the things they really like about their school. Um, use your own sort of memories of your experience to, to get your child really excited about what, what nursery is going to be like. Um, and, and sort of play to your child's strengths as well or their interests. If, if you've got a very sociable child that really likes um, being other children, talk about that, about all the friends that they, they will have when they go to nursery. Um, if your child really likes art and craft, talk about all the fun painting and, and activities that they're going to do when they get there. Um, and that's also a really good way of sort of introducing maybe uh, the kinds of activities that they will do at nursery at home before they go. So you can, you know, get, get the puzzles out, get the blocks out, do some construction, um, look at some numbers and letters, do some colouring in. Um, lots of different ways of sort of bringing those learning activities that they're likely to experience at nursery into your home before. So your child kind of knows what to expect and, and also will give you a bit more information about what your child is likely to enjoy at nursery and what they maybe will need a bit more encouragement with. Um, so, so yeah, just as much um, as much as you can do before, uh, the better it will be when your child starts. Other things um, to find out about are what the nursery or school's routine is like, um, to find out what they typically do in the day, how they start their day, um, what what sort of expectations um, the nursery has of children that go there. Um, do they have, uh, you know, do they, do they do lots of carpet time where they sit down on the carpet in a group? Um, how do they have their meals? Do they eat them at the table or are they sitting on the carpet? What kind of uh, sort of, I guess, expectations they have around the source of food that the children need while they're there? Um, and then, of course, we talked about the last bit already, but having a, a regular bedtime um, that they're used to well before the first day of term uh, and making sure that they're used to sort of when they wake up in the morning, getting getting ready, getting dressed and, and having some breakfast before they leave the house uh, so that on the first day of nursery, it's not a big shock to them. They need to be out of their pajamas and ready to go quite soon. Um, yeah, that's really helpful. And then um, I talked a bit at the start about the importance of collaboration between home 
um, parents at home and, and staff at the school um, or the nursery. Uh, and then, so a part of that collaboration is sharing information sort of both ways. Uh, so find out how the nursery will share information with you about what your child's day or week or um, however long they're there for, what, what it was like for them. So if you want to know specific information, perhaps um, about how much food they ate or uh, what they did in the day, you can be very clear and direct with the nursery and ask them for that information. Um, and, and also to find out how they'll be sharing it to so some nurseries might you know, it might be quite an informal process where they will just tell you at the end of the day when you pick your child up. Um, some of them might have sort of a home, a home nursery book where they will write things. Um, a learning journey book sometimes will have photographs of your child doing different things and they might share this with you sort of periodically. Um, probably not every day, but uh, you can still ask for information if you need it. Um, and then equally important is, is that you share information with the nursery uh, about important things, like if there's been some changes at home or someone different is coming to pick your child up or drop them off. Um, if, if your child's been ill and they're just coming back to school, maybe they're not feeling 100% better, but they're mostly there. They might need um, a little bit extra care. Uh, so make sure that your your nursery knows about that. Um, and of course, another really useful, um, I guess, uh, well, another really useful thing about sharing information is that you and the school are sort of working together to build your child's skills. So if they've enjoyed something in particular at nursery, you can do the same with them at home and also if they enjoy something at home you can let the nursery know so they maybe have got a chance to do that while they're there um, and equally if they're finding something difficult at nursery you can help work on it at home um, or the other way around as well um, and equally if, if you're doing something at home that really seems to work for your child but maybe nursery is struggling with that Sharing that information will just mean that nursery can implement that strategy at, 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 at their setting as well, um, which is, of course, going to be helpful for your child. Um, and we have talked about some of this already, but, but some of the information that you might want to share with the nursery about your child is about things like their routine, um, the things they like, so if they've got a particular song or activity, or toy, friend, food, um, anything that they really enjoy or dislike, um, it's important that the nursery knows that. Um, and try and sort of make sure that you keep that communication up so that you can resolve any issues early on. Um, and also so you can keep things consistent, because one of the things that may happen when your child starts nursery is that suddenly they're they're getting used to a very different um, set of expectations or very different routines um, and it could be quite confusing for them going from from one setting to another where, where what's expected of them or how they're meant to do things is quite different um, so it's useful to know um, what's expected so that you can try and keep that consistent across both home and school as far as possible. Um, but yeah, I think we've covered all of what, what, what I wanted to say. Um, I guess the thing I'll just leave you with is there's lots and lots of things that you can do to make sure your child is prepared. And it can be tempting, I suppose, to try and do all of those things before your child goes to nursery, which um, depending on where your child is and, and, and what your sort of what the demands on you are may be possible, but it also may not be possible. Um, and it's OK, you don't have to do everything on the list. Um, I guess just try and have maybe a list of three things that, that are most important, you think, for your child to be able to do or know before they go. Um, and think about a few steps that you can make that you can take to help them um, sort of be able to do those things before they go to nursery. 
uh, yeah, I guess um, if you've got a clear goal in mind, then you can plan for it more effectively. So just just think about your your unique circumstances and what's achievable for you and your child in the time you have uh, and work towards that. Um, OK. And just to say that in all of that, <laughs> this is a very exciting time for you and your child. So make sure you you take some time to just enjoy the process as well and, and not get too hung up on on the details because as I said before, the nursery that your child is going to will have experienced all of this before and they will be there to support you and your child um, on this sort of very exciting new adventure. Uh, so don't worry too much. <laughs> um, OK, I think we've reached the end of, of the slides, Hannah. Um, there's plenty of time for questions now. So if anyone does have anything or if anybody would like to go over any of the slides again, we can do that as well. 